Hello everyone. So let us continue our discussion. We are in the sixth uh, module, and um, today we are going to learn a technique called response spectrum method. Now, if I consider the example of a single degree freedom system that we have already developed, so there is a portal frame and it has a mass which is denoted by m and each column has some stiffness and damping property and both of them together offers some lateral stiffness uh, which is denoted by k and the damping is denoted by c. Obviously, that is the combined effect of the two columns. Now, obviously, we have uh, one degree of freedom in this case x of t and we have learned how to um, solve this uh, using um, different techniques and particularly for arbitrary forcing function, uh, we have developed a technique called Duhamel integral. Now, just imagine if we have a forcing function which is acting at the base, we partly covered this problem. So, the supports of this system is excited by this ground acceleration, this uh, subscript G represents ground. Now, during earthquake what happens? The support of the structures, they are excited by some support motion and normally we measure um, earthquake ground acceleration and we have also discussed the device that uh, offers uh, this recording and how they operate what is the mathematics behind those uh, instruments we call seismograph that we have covered. So, today our starting point is if we have a structure and we know the ground acceleration, then uh, we can solve this structure obviously in one way it is x of t will be what 0 to t h t minus tau f tau d tau right and this is what we call Duhamel integral. We can also solve the same technique using uh, say Negum and Jennings. We will actually use this technique today to solve the problem. Now, before we do that again uh, we can develop the equation of motion for this structure and for that again if I draw the free body diagram of the mass. So, we have the inertia. So, this is m x double dot and then there will be a restoring force which is k times x minus x g and the damping will also act. So, this will be c times x dot minus x g dot. So, that is the free body diagram. Now, the equation of motion in this case will be what? Equation of motion is m x double dot plus c x dot minus x g dot plus k x minus x g equal to 0. Obviously, I am not writing the 
initial conditions for the time being. So, let us focus on this equation. So, what we have is uh, m x double dot plus c x dot plus k x is equal to c x g dot plus k x g. Now, this is our first equation. The point to be noted here, if you look at this uh, displacement x, this is the absolute displacement of the mass denoted by m. So, let me write it down x of t is the absolute displacement. Now, obviously in this equation if you look at we have a forcing function which is there on the right hand side right. And for that what you need if you look at we need x g that is the ground displacement and x g dot that is the velocity with which the ground or the support moves. Now, obviously what we measure we measure x g double dot and we do not have these two quantities although we can work it out because if we integrate x g double dot once we will get x g dot and twice then we will automatically get x g uh, of t. But if you look at the expression itself and then if we assume that we have a new variable say u which is equal to x minus x g right. So, what is u of t now? u of t is the relative displacement of m with respect to ground. So, x of t is the absolute displacement while y of t sorry u of t in this case is the relative deformation of the mass m. Now, if you use this uh, new variable u then we can modify equation 1. So, what we get from equation 1 we have m x double dot. So, m then u double dot plus x g double dot now then we have c times we have x dot minus x g dot so from this equation if we differentiate what we have u dot is equal to x dot minus x g dot and then uh, if we differentiate once more what we have u double dot is equal to x double dot minus x g double dot that is what we have already used. So, the damping force in the new format will be what c times u dot plus the stiffness or the restoring force will be k times u is equal to 0. <laughs> Now, if we further simplify this equation what we have m u double dot plus c u dot plus k u is equal to minus m x g double dot. So, that is equation 2. Now, if you look at this equation on the left hand side we have the familiar form of the equation that we have already derived many a times and then on the right hand side if you look at this expression this is the forcing function and what is the force acting uh, on the structure it is mass times the ground acceleration. So, mass times acceleration is the force and this is the amount of force acting on the structure when we develop the equation of motion. Uh, in terms of u that is the relative deformation. Now, obviously, the moment we have this equation uh, we prefer this equation simply because uh, 
we have ground acceleration measured. So, we know x g double dot. So, let me write it down. Uh, so, this quantity x g double dot this is known because using some seismograph we measure the acceleration response and the moment we do that we know the forcing function f of t. So, what is the f of t? It is mass times the ground acceleration with a negative sign. This is important as we progress in this course we will see uh, for a MDOF system this negative sign will give us actually uh, the influence vector. I will come to that in uh, when we will discuss uh, the same uh, solution strategy for multi degree of freedom system. But for the time being the point to be noted we have a negative sign here. Then minus m times x g double dot is the forcing function. Now, the moment we write down this expression we can develop this u of t will be what will be 0 to t h t minus tau. Now, we have f tau d tau. Right. And then what is f tau? We can further modify this. What we have is uh, minus m times x g double dot of tau d tau. So, that is the solution for the relative deformation. Obviously, if we want to find out what is the absolute deformation, uh, then again we need to know this um, ground displacement and together uh, we can actually work out uh, this absolute deformation because we already know u of t. So, if you know x g of t then we can find out this absolute deformation. Now, before we move further let us again look at this expression we have in equation now, just imagine if we have mass is 1, then what will happen? Then the equation will be u double dot or what we can uh, say that if we divide both sides of equation 2 by the mass m, then the first term will be u double dot plus the second term will be what? We know this will be twice eta omega n u dot plus omega n square u is equal to minus x g double dot. So, that is the same second equation, but in a new format. So, let us call it equation 3. So, this is the equation we will use in our response spectrum generation. So, the point to be noted here we have a unit mass. So, this equation has two parameters on the left hand side we have omega n and eta and the system is excited by the support motion here it is given by the known x g double dot. So, that is the starting point. Now, Obviously, the moment we solve this system and find out the response of the structure that is u of t. So, we can find out u of t using either Duhamel or any other numerical technique uh, because after this um, initial lecture we will develop a MATLAB code. There we will use already developed Neumann, Neumann, sorry, Nigam Jennings code and then we will find out the solution. You can use any other um, suitable code for example, Wilson theta or Neumach beta. Now, the moment we define the natural frequency and damping, then if we 
measure an acceleration, ground acceleration, then we can find out the response u of t. Obviously, that response will have a maximum value. So, let me quickly draw this frame again because we will refer this frame again and again. So, what we have this frame and if I just slightly modify, we are not defining the frame in terms of m c k. So, m is equal to 1. So, m is equal to 1 and k is now the moment m is 1, we have natural frequency, its square will be the damping and then we have eta. Sorry, natural frequency square will be stiffness and then we have eta which is damping. Now, we have u of t in place of x of t. So, we have u of t and we have a ground acceleration. So, what are the given quantity? Let me just mark it. So, this is the given quantity, the natural frequency damping and then we fix a ground motion. Now, the moment we do that, we can find out what is u of t and then uh, we can also find out the maximum value of that u of t. So, if we write down say S d, that is the maximum value over all t, the absolute maximum. So, it is u of t given natural frequency damping x g dot. Right. I repeat once more, what is this quantity on the left hand side? The moment we fix this natural frequency and damping and we give a input say ground motion, say this is our ground motion, then we can easily find out what is the u of t. And we can also mark the maximum value of this quantity. Now, in this case it is in the positive side, you can also have in the negative side and that is the reason we have considered the absolute displacement and then we take the maximum value. Now, if you repeat the same exercise for different values of omega n, then what we will get? If we plot, what we will get? On the x axis, we have omega n and then on the y axis, we have S t and for every value, so say this is omega n 1, this is omega n 2 and so on. And for every value, we have some value of S d. Now, if we join this, what we will get? We will get a plot of the maximum deformation of this S dot system for different natural frequencies. So, this will be for a given, given damping. and x g double dot. For the time being, let us consider one uh, earthquake ground motion. So, for a given damping, we will have a plot like this. Similarly, we can repeat the same exercise for the same natural frequencies, but for a different damping. So, we will get probably like a plot this or this. These plots that gives us the maximum value of the displacement for this system is what is called the response spectrum. 
I repeat once more. So, we have a single degree of freedom system. For that, we change the parameters of the single degree of freedom system. What are the parameters? Natural frequency and damping. Then we select an earthquake. For that earthquake, we find out the response of the structure for the given damping level and we keep on changing the natural frequency. Then for each value of the natural frequency, we have the maximum value of the deformation and that deformation if we plot, we get a spectrum which is the response of the structure, hence it is called response spectrum. If we repeat the same exercise, just let me remove this part. So, if we repeat the same exercise and in place of displacement, if I store the values of velocity, then what we will get? We will get as v is equal to maximum value over all t u dot of t given omega n eta and ground motion. So, this plot, the second one will give us the velocity response spectrum. First one is for displacement, second one is for velocity and then we can also find out the same for acceleration. So, the last one is for acceleration, all of them are response spectrum. So, what is response spectrum? It is the maximum value of the response of a SDOP system where we generate this plot for different values of omega n keeping eta as constant and then by fixing the support motion. Now, normally If you look at the textbooks, in place of natural frequency, we prefer time period because time period T n is equal to 2 pi by omega n and this is also equal to inverse of the frequency in hertz, right. So, in most of the references, you will find that this response spectrum is uh, developed for an SDOP system where we actually keep on changing this time period of the system. Sometimes in place of time period, um, frequency in hertz also you can notice but mostly time period is used and in fact, the code that we will generate will also use time period. Now, the values that you can see what we have S d, S v and S a and on the right hand side what we have, we have displacement u of t and we find out the maximum value, absolute maximum value then u dot of t and then u double dot of t, right. Now, normally what is done, we find out this using some algorithm, either Duhamel or Nigam Jennings or similar algorithm and then from this quantity S d, we find out what is the velocity spectrum and acceleration spectrum that I will explain in a minute. But, uh, for the time being, the point to be noted is that response spectrum is the maximum value of the response for the given parameters of a SDOP system. Now, why it is so useful? As we progress, we will see that when we will have MDOP system for multi degree of freedom system, we do not need to solve the time history response every time 
Once we generate the response spectrum, we can use that information to find out the design parameters because when we design a structure, for example, even in this case, we are actually worried of this maximum deformation because this maximum deformation will give us the maximum value of strain and subsequently stresses. So, when we design the structure, we are always worried of this maximum deformation and that is the reason we can use the response spectrum and we can bypass the time history response that is always time consuming and sometimes particularly for MDOP system you will see it is very difficult also because if you have large number of degrees of freedom you need computational resources to solve the structure. But we can use this uh, response spectrum to find out the maximum response of the structure. So, the designer can immediately start the design. Now, if you look at this um, frame, <coughs> what is restoring force or the stiffness force? If you look at, it is nothing but k times u of t. Now, if you recall, what is omega n? This is square root of k by m or in other words, what is k? That is m omega n square. So, if we put that value, what we have? m omega n square times u of t. Now, <coughs> if you look at the expression. So, k times deformation, it is force. On the right hand side also we have mass times a quantity that gives us force. So, what is this quantity? We can say this is nothing but say A of t or acceleration, right. So, what is a of t acceleration, this is nothing but omega n square u of t. Now, if I take the maximum, so A max will be what? Omega n square u max. Obviously, this expression tells us that the moment we find out S d, if we multiply that by omega n square, what we will get? The maximum value of acceleration, right. Now, this <coughs> is called P s a, which is equal to omega n square times S d. What is the full form? It is pseudo spectral acceleration. Why pseudo? Because we do not get the acceleration by solving the equilibrium equations, but we use the maximum value of the deformation and multiply that by omega n square to find out the maximum value of the acceleration. Obviously, you can sense. So, what we will do to draw the acceleration response spectrum? We will start from the displacement response spectrum and each value of the displacement response spectrum, if we multiply that by omega n square, we will immediately get the acceleration response spectrum. Similarly, you can also show that S v or P s v will be equal to omega n times s t. This I just leave an exercise for you, you just try it. <coughs> so, this is again called pseudo spectral velocity.
So, we have these three quantities. So, we have S d for that we need to solve the equation of motion using any suitable technique. The moment we find out S d then we can find out what is velocity spectrum and then acceleration spectrum just by multiplying omega n for velocity and then uh, omega n square for acceleration. So, that is the step. So, if I write down the steps for uh, response spectrum. So, what we do steps for developing response spectrum. Number 1 set T n and eta. So, that is the parameter of the SDOP system. Second or let me just slightly modify. So, the first step select x g double dot of t and then in the second step set t n and eta. Third step solve u of t and find S d. Number 4, evaluate P as V and P as N. Then in the fifth step, change T n and repeat step three and four. Then finally plot time period versus ST. And we can also plot the same for other two quantities. So, this will be P s v and then I will show you a sample response spectrum in a minute. But once this analysis is done, you see what we have we have the maximum value of the response, it may be displacement, velocity, acceleration for different values of T n that is the time period and the damping. So, once we develop this for a given acceleration, then the moment we go for design, we do not need to solve again and again the time history response, we can use this information and straight away we can go to the design. Now, for that, let us first see how a response spectrum looks like. So, if we, for example, if you plot a schematic diagram, if we quickly draw, so say S d versus uh, your omega n will be something like this. 
Then if we select any omega n star for our design, so this is for a given eta, then we can find out the maximum value of the displacement. So, our task is to find out the natural frequency and then the immediately we can figure out what is the value of the displacement and that value of the displacement we use for the design. Okay. So, this is a sample uh, acceleration response spectrum you can see on your screen. On the x axis what we have, we have time period as I told you earlier. So, that is the time period of the single degree of freedom system and this response spectrum is taken from Anil K. Chopra's book. It is for L centro ground motion. So, L centro will ground motion and if I correctly recall the damping level is 2 percent. And for that, we have different values of Tn and for every Tn value, we solve, find out the maximum acceleration and then we plot this graph and that is what is the acceleration response spectrum. As I said, if we now start design of a system, so we have say a frame what is our task? We first choose some sectional property and material, so we can find out what is the natural frequency from this stiffness and mass and the moment we do that we can easily find out what is the A star. So, if you recall what is the force acting on this, it is minus mass times acceleration, right. So, this is the force F of t, right. And we have the response spectrum for this system. Obviously, if we change this ground motion, what will happen? We will have different response spectrum and uh, we do not use a uh, response spectrum for individual earthquake. We develop a design spectrum that is a different topic altogether, but it comes from the same analysis. So, we select uh, ground motion for that we develop response spectrum for different ground motions we have uh, this different uh, response spectrum and then from that uh, we work out what should be the design elastic response spectrum. That uh, is a different topic that is mostly covered in earthquake resistant design. For the time being the point that worries us how to develop this response spectrum and I have already explained what is the meaning of response spectrum, how do we develop the response spectrum and what are the different um, types of response spectrum that we can have. Before we conclude, let me again go back to the same equation. So, what we have here, if I just uh, create some space. So, what we have here, you can see the moment we uh, solve the maximum displacement, we can use that information to find out uh, maximum value of the velocity and acceleration using this expression what we have. Let me just write it down here. So, P s a is equal to omega n square s t and P s v is equal to omega n times s t, right. Now, we can obviously develop response spectrum for um, different response quantities. It may be displacement, it may be velocity, it may be acceleration, but all of them are actually connected through this relation. So, these two if you carefully notice. 
So, it tells us that the moment we have SD, then from that we can find out the other two quantities. Now, now if you look at the first expression, say let me write it, it is PSV, but let me write it as V just to or, or I can take the PSV, no problem. So, what we have say this equation and if I take the logarithm, so we have log of PSV, this quantity will be equal to what? Will be equal to log of omega n plus log of SD. So, that is my equation 4. So, if I plot P S V versus T n, right. In the log scale, then we get this relation. So, what is the slope of this line? We will have slope of this line is 45 degree. So, in the 45 degree, if we project this value, what we will get? We will basically get the S d from the same plot. Similarly, modify this equation. So, P S A equal to or P S A by omega n is equal to what? P S V. Right. Okay. So, if we take the logarithm, we have minus log of omega n plus log of Now, what is the slope of this line? Slope is one thirty five degree. Here the slope is forty five degree. So instead of three different plots, what we can do? We plot PSV for different time period in log log scale and then immediately on the 45 degree angle we will have SD and then on 135 degree we will have PSA. So, the same plot will give us all three quantities. So, if I show you this is the plot for all three quantities. So, with that let us close here, we will continue our discussion in the next class. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.